Hi, Bruno Jr. here. Our podcast, Busting Addiction and Smiths, is sponsored by SafeHouseRehab.com. SafeHouse believes that traditional treatments fall short of the needs of clients who face the modern problems of addiction. Modern problems need modern solutions. Multiple addictions, multiple relapses, multiple triggers, and cheaper and more powerful street drugs set up unprecedented challenges facing treatment centers. What is needed is a more sophisticated approach a better way forward. There are three reasons to choose our progressive modern treatment program. One, a more sophisticated intake process. Two, technology proven to enhance recovery. And three, the most robust aftercare program in our sector. To learn more, visit us at safehouserehab.com. This is season 11, episode three. Are you a faker? Faker is a Muslim and Hindi-derived word, and it's pronounced about the same as is the word faker, F-A-K-E-R, in English. And I should say that the um, faker in Muslim is spelled F-A-K-I-R. The complete irony to me is that upon looking upon its meaning is that a faker, or F-A-K-I-R, or faker, F A QR is derived from an Islamic term traditionally used for a Sufi Muslim whose contingency and utter dependence on God is manifest in everything they do and every breath they take. This is from Wikipedia, among other encyclopedias that pretty much tell you the same thing. In other words, a fakir is anything but a faker. He surrounds his, he surrenders his life to a higher power at the most sincere level. Mohandas Gandhi was of that type, if, if not officially a fakir. The reason I bring this idea up is to confront myself and others on this spiritual journey, whether we're in AA, NA, Al-Anon, or any of the other many 12-step programs about this topic. Am I faking it? Is my recovery for real? Am I a counterfeiter? Do I completely give myself to this simple program? In the words of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous from the big book, in the chapter entitled, How It Works. I've discovered to my delight that my audience is mostly people who have an addict or alcoholic who is dear to them, and that's not the delight. But the delight is that you, your audience, are very worried about what is really going on with your loved one, and you want to know how you can help the loved one straighten out and fly right. And that's the good part. A most puzzling and frustrating affair, this addiction and or alcoholism is, I'm sure you've found out. So the problem, in quote, of how to help him or straighten out then gets redefined and reframed in my podcast and a blog that shows up on safehouserehab.com in the following ways. One, Al-Anon, for those whose loved one has gone astray, is not about how to get your loved one to straighten out and fly right you discover that you are as powerless as is your loved one over the disease. I'll bring up the topic of intervention at another time, and that you have been made sick by it. Two, then if you or anyone else is, quote, working the 12 steps of an an anonymous program, especially Al-Anon, you have to ask yourself if you're going to the meetings just to make yourself feel better, and you will feel better, or are you ready to do the work that will truly heal the damage the disease has done to you and free you to grow as a worthy human being. Three, if you are honest with yourself and admit that you believe that it is enough just to go to the meetings to be with others who are like you, to feel less alone and therefore feel better, then that's okay. It is my fervent hope that you keep coming back and start to go deeper into the 12 steps and change internally so that you can help the next suffering person who comes along. Number four, I guarantee you that helping someone else will start to change your life in ways you never imagined. You will move from just going through the motions to gaining a deeper understanding of yourself and what's been holding you back. As for the rest of us who may have been in one of the programs, especially AA and Al-Anon, I ask myself and you this question. Have I been going through the motions, attending my usual dose of few or fewer meetings with the same people week in and week out? Do I hear myself and others say the same thing week after week? Or am I open to new thoughts and new ideas and perhaps found new ways to change about myself? Am I running a counterfeit program? Am I a faker just getting by enough to not drink today and that's about it? 
And am I talking the talk and not walking the walk? Years ago, when I was the house manager of a sober living house in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we had our own AANA, Narcotics Anonymous, meeting every Friday night. I heard the same guy say the same thing for months, week after week. I eventually learned that this Friday night meeting among house members and ex-members like myself, the ex-house mother, that is, was the one and only AANA meeting that they attended. That wasn't enough for me. And when I left the house and came back every now and then to visit the house and try to get the rookies to awaken to the seriousness of their situation, there they were. Same group of five or so guys saying the same thing over and over. Same resentment, same victimhood, same problems with, quote, other people every Friday night. I shall observe and judge just a little, believe that there's a judge greater than me and that the judge resides really in my conscience anyway. The guys I referred to, the Friday night regulars, were running a counterfeit program. They were a long, long way from completely giving themselves away to this simple program. Let me address another form of fakery, of hypocrisy, that I have to challenge myself with as well. Am I running a counterfeit program if I do not question how my beliefs and attitudes undercut the spirit of the 12-step program? Can I see the hypocrisy in my own life where I believe in the sanctity of life and yet support war? Have I taken the teachings of my personal higher power to heart? Have I overcome my personal inertia so that I can go on to expend energy toward helping another human being, period? Have I done any good and kept it to myself? Or must I post it on social media platform right away? One of my biggest character defects is the fear of looking bad. I find it hard to tell the whole truth. Now we should make allowances for cultural niceties, but I am talking about within my own circle, my own family and friends, and my AA group. I do carry a bit of AA pride in me. I let people know I've been clean and sober since July 1993. I want the newcomers to be impressed. I want the old-timers to elevate my stature as a leader, ignoring what Tradition 2 says, which says, in part, our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. Trusted servants, Bruno J. Trusted servants. Here's a question. How deep into the cave of truth do people want to go? And the answer is just deep enough to say they've been there. That's how it is. A friend in the program says that if we were to completely abide by the principles of meditation, as taught in the 11th step of AA, we would surrender to the present moment always, and there would not be a past or future. Now that is the purest of logic that I can't match, but it is consistent with what one of my teachers, Eckhart Tolle, has stated, which is to renounce unnecessary thinking and be present instead. Our egos, friends, keep us in regret of yesterday and fear of tomorrow. So what have we learned about fakery today? Well, we learned that one, if we do not surrender to a teaching and do not completely give ourselves to this simple program, whatever it is, we're likely to not get any of the major benefits that we ourselves seek. Two, we are all lazy to some extent in that we want to go through the motions and fear going deeper. It's fear that blocks us from personal growth. Number three, we who have an addict in the house, a person whom we love dearly, discover in Al-Anon or in some other way, that we are as powerless over the addiction and as sick as is the addict himself. What a revelation. Number four, we must ask ourselves if we want something for nothing, if we, or if we're willing to make the necessary sacrifices in order to become free and grow as human beings. And finally, number five, the essence of the art of life, it is taught, is the acquired ability to live in the present moment where the ego and fear that generates disappear. Our podcast is sponsored by SafeHouseRehab.com, a modern approach to recovery. To learn more, visit us at SafeHouseRehab.com.